Der 81 Reasons to Fall in Love with Turkey in Number 36 ist Cars. Franziska. Cars. One of the most interesting places I have ever been to. A place that is not only fascinating because of its countless dances, shows and goose meat, but because of its long and never forgetting history. One of the most important historical events for the Turkish nation is the Matterdom that happened in Sarıkamış. The Battle of Sarıkamış took place during World War I between the Russian and Ottoman empires. As a result of a very cool snowstorm and not enough resources, thousands of soldiers froze to death before the start of the battle in the Alahubra mountains. I'm now standing here at the Sarıkamış monument that was built in remembrance of all the soldiers who lost their lives during the Sarıkamış. Battle. The Turkish soldiers who were murdered for the national struggle in 1914 are both the biggest pain and also an unforgettable period of this country. There is a very famous ski resort, the Kayak Merkezi in Sarıkamış. And they say the snow quality in cars is one of the best in the world. Woohoo! Woohoo! Wow! I'm having so much fun! So I just bought a ticket for the chairlift. It's 20 liras for one person. <laughs> okay. Whoa, let's go! <laughs> it's very slippery. Oh my god. Whoa! <laughs> so I have a friend here, Adin Isnel. Zico. Zico. Merhaba, Zico. Merhaba. The video is here. Thank you. Where are you I'm Alman, but I live in Turkey. I'm here to check out the video. Check Şimdi Kars hakkında bir video çekiyorum. Siniz ne? Franziska. Franziska. Evet. Çok memnun oldum. Ben de çok memnun oldum. So this is the chair lift. The good thing about cars is that because there is snow everywhere, you don't really have to go high up to the mountains to go skiing. Wow, I really love it. Hadi görüşürüz. Ben gidiyorum. Görüşürüz. See you. Kars is one of the cities in Turkey with the highest altitudes. That's why the temperatures here are very harsh, as it is high and also the sea is separated by the mountains. Winters in Kars get very cold, up to minus 36 degrees. Woohoo! Yay! But before we talk more about Kars, let me actually show you how I came to Kars. The most popular way to get to Kars is actually by taking the Isan Express. The train starts in Ankara and it takes over 26 hours to go all the way to Kars. The Eastern Express, one of the best long distance trains that exist in this world. The train takes you all the way to, you guess it, the very east of Turkey. a lot of tunnels and the scenery is just amazing it is said that this train journey is one of the most scenic train rides in the world Manzara Muhteşem Gerçekten çok elendim No matter if summer or winter but winter gives it kind of a special charm 
There are two different Eastern Express trains running, the touristic one and also the normal one. I'm right here in the normal one. Tickets start at about 80 liras per person, but you gotta be quick because tickets are sold out very easily. So make sure to make a reservation beforehand. After the long train ride, I finally came to Cars and I decided to go straight to the city center, which has a lot of interesting sites and buildings. The first thing I noticed when entering Cars were actually these wide roadways and they were only going in one direction and this is very untypical for Turkey and that's because Kars was under a huge influence of the Russians. This area changed hands between the Ottomans and the Russians many times. After the war of 1877 to 1878, also known as the 93 war, the city remained under Russian control for about 40 years. <laughs> During these years the Russians started lots of constructions and zone works so they transformed this area into a quite orderly city and this all happened over a hundred years ago. You can see a building that has many names. The Cathedral of Christ, the Holy Church of Apostles, the Church of the Twelve Apostles and the Kümbet Mosque. The building is situated right below the castle which you can see over there. It was built in the 930s by the Armenians and used as a church later on as a cathedral. Then it was turned into a mosque, into a church, a museum. Now it's a mosque again, so it has a very long history. On the outside, on top of the building, you can spot 12 figures, which are usually interpreted as the 12 apostles. The building was converted into a mosque in 1579 and later converted into a Russian Orthodox church in the 1880s. It was abandoned for about two decades until it was converted back into a mosque in 1993. The Kars Castle, one of the symbols of the city, it was built during the Armenian Bagratid dynasty and later on rebuilt in 1153. The outer walls surrounding the city were built a little bit later in the 12th century. There were many wars and cars, so you can imagine that the castle was destroyed many times during history, but it was eventually rebuilt in 1579 by Lala Mustafa Pasha, who was sent here from Istanbul to Kars. In 1606 it was destroyed again, in 1616 and 1636 it was rebuilt twice. It is said that the castle was rebuilt by over 100,000 workers and soldiers. After the Ottoman-Russian War in 1877 to 1878, the castle was a little bit lost and because of the 40 years of Russian domination it lost its original use and also features. Today it is open, everyone can visit and have a beautiful view over the city center of Kars. So today, when you enter Kars city, you will notice a lot of big buildings with Baltic architecture. Most of them are used as private residences and some of them are hotels. One of the great examples of Russian architecture is actually the hotel that I'm staying in right now, the Cheldikov Hotel. It was built in the 19th century and it has not always been a hotel, it was actually used as a hospital and doctor's house before. Now there are over 20 boutique rooms that have a very authentic style and in my opinion this is one of the most authentic buildings that you can come across here in Kars. This is just one of over a hundred buildings that have been registered and are under protection right now in Kars. 
Mosque, another example of a church that was later on converted into a mosque. The Fethiye Mosque, definitely one of my favorite buildings here in Kars. It was built during the Russian occupation in the 19th century. It has a rectangular structure because it used to be a church. Even though this building is one of the oldest constructions in the region, it remained empty after 1915. It was completely abandoned. After being used by some public institutions for a while, the church was finally converted into a mosque over a hundred years ago. Beautiful example of cultural mixes in architecture. Welcome to Francis Food Review. Bu ne? İran kökenli bir yemek. Kuzu eti ile yapılır. Kuzu eti nohut zerdeçal dediğimiz bitki kökü tozu kullanılarak yapılır. Aha. Kuzu eti biraz kokar, yoğun bir tadı kokusu olur. Zerdeçal o kokuyu bastırır, hem kendi lezzetini katar. Aman. <gülüyor> Üstünüzü de. Problem yok. Wow, çok güzel görünüyor. Çok iyi pişmiş olduğu için çatalınızda dokunduğunuzda kemikten ayrılır. Keminizi bunun içine bırakabilirsiniz. Çok teşekkürler. Afiyet olsun. There is another specialty in Kars that I want to try. It's called piti. And it consists of very well cooked meat, some nohut, onion. And as we could see the waiter was pouring all of the stuff over some bread, which is really interesting. I've never seen this before. And this? Bread. For this? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay, so the time has come. I'm going to try PT. Mmm. Çok güzel. Mmm. It's lamb meat. Okay, lamb meat. Really good. What I love about this dish is that it has a big variety of many things. So it's really not boring and it's very unique, I think, in Turkey. You cannot find it everywhere. Exactly. Udur and kars only. Hmm. The soup, like the water of all the cooked things, is really tasty. Trying this with some rice. Çok güzel. Tastes like my grandma at home. Really good. It's really good. I, don't, I, don't. I really enjoy it. Afiyet olsun. So here we have hangal. It's like manta. Manta yeah, without meat. Without meat. So it's vegetarian. Hadi. Ben wir schabka ein Maxtiorum. Çünkü ben kaslı gibi görünmek istiyorum. So we are trying to find a good hat now because the winters are really cold and I need something to protect my head. Oh. <laughs> we have different options. I like this. <laughs> Fiyat ne kadar? 150 attım. <gülüyor> tamam. 175 abi. 150 tamam. attım. Tamam. tamam. Çok teşekkürler. Tamam. İndirim yaptım. İndirim. Çok teşekkürler. Rica ediyorum. <gülüyor> ben teşekkür ederim. Güzel bir şapka. Kaz Aşap Sana Dünyası. The best place to buy a hat in Kaz. <gülüyor> Kars is really cold. I'm freezing my hands, my feet. <gasps> so I decided to rent a car in Kars because I came here with the Eastern Express. I'm not with my Limon Tofash. I rented this car. I paid 900 liras for two days and I'm going to explore Kars. Let's go. Ah, so nice to have a working car. Streets are good, but not in the best condition, but they are drivable they are drivable. If I can drive them, everybody can drive them. Yavash, yavash. Slowly, slowly. Ok. 
Okay, we arrived at the ruins. Located at the Armenian border, 30 minutes from Kars, you can find the magnificent, the ancient city of Ani. It was established during the Middle Ages and probably it was one of the most important cities in terms of religion, culture and trades during this time. The ancient city of Ani was the capital of the Armenian Bagritat kingdom. It is estimated that at least 100,000 people used to live here, even up to 200,000 people. And in comparison to that, Kars city's population is around 80,000. So this city was huge, enormous, it had an unimaginable big importance. Today there are unfortunately only a few buildings left and the church that you can see behind me is the most well preserved building in the ancient city of Ani today. In the ancient city of Ani there used to be over 40 churches, chapels and mausoleums. That's why the city was also known as the 1001 church city. Today only eight churches and mosques have survived and this is one of them. The ancient city of Ani was taken by the Seljuks in 1071 and that was actually the time when the first mosque here was built. Ani has witnessed many wars over the centuries so the city was taken over by lots of different civilizations. Throughout history this place has seen a big mix of different cultures and people from all over the regions and that's what's so special about the ancient city of Ani. This is the first mosque that was built here in Ani. It was built in 1071 by the Seljuks and Sultan Alpaslan who conquered the city, he was taking the churches with the Christian symbols and converted them into mosques. But he kept the Christian symbols. That's a very special thing actually. Kars is a city located in the very eastern part of Turkey, close to the Armenian border. Actually, when you look behind me, this is Armenia. Kars is also a very multicultural city because of its location. It was a very important point of the Silk Route and that's why many different civilizations from these areas used to come to Kars for tradings. Kars is a border city and because of that it was the capital of different countries. It was the capital of the Armenian Baghdad Kingdom and also of the Senubu Gabi Caucasian government. The communities that make up the Kars people are coming from different backgrounds. There are Azeris, Persians, Kurds, Turkish people, Turkmens and many others. Today all of these different communities are living in peace together in Kars and I think that's Çok güzel. A great example of cultural exchange here in Kars is the famous Kars cheese, the Kars peniri. Why? Because the Malakans used to teach the Turks how to produce this cheese. So I would say let's try some cheese. Hangi peniri en ünlü mü? Gravia. Çok güzel. Ve bu gibi yiyebiliyor muyum? Tamam. Eski kaşar. Eski kaşar. Bu altta gördüklerimiz. Ah evet tamam. Deneyebiliriz. Tabii ki. Şekerli. Hmm. Oh. Yoğun ama bu tadı daha yoğun. Hmm. Çok güzel. Çok ağır. Bu ağırsa bu daha ağır. Gerçekten. Şöyle söyleyeyim o yediğiniz peynir şu an yani 13 kilo geliyor. Yani hmm. 20 litre falan sütten yapılıyor. Ama hmm. şu gördüğünüz gravyer 2 ton sütte hmm. Çok çok lezzetli. Yani yediğiniz o küçük parça bir bardak süt şu anda. Hmm. Hmm. Yani Güzel olabiliyor. Aynen. Very tasty. You should drink it with a glass of milk. It's really really good. I prefer this more. Bunun adı ne? Gravyer. Gravyer hmm. ve bu eski. Eski kaşar. Küflü hmm. kaşar diye de geçiyor. Hmm. Ve bal var değil mi? The honey in Kars is also very special because it is completely organic. 
Teşekkürler ama çok fazla. Boğazımız da ya şimdi boğazınızı temizleri yakar yani. Hmm. Boğazı temizliyor. Hmm. Çok güzel. Aferin. Hmm. Çok beğendim. Aferin. Biz balık hmm. kendimiz üretiyoruz. Kaşarları hmm. alıyoruz ama balık kendimiz üretiyoruz. Organik değil mi? Organik kendimiz üretiyoruz yani. Kendimiz arızılıkla yaşıyoruz. Aa. Aha. Ve hangi ağı? Nasıl ağı? Ağı, ayı, ağı. Şey yazın. Hayır. Hangi bal ağrısı? Şey, çiçek. Çiçek falan. Çiçek? Yani çiçek, normal çiçek falan oluyor burada. Ha. Ağrısı da Kafkas arısı. Aa tamam. Yani onu sordum zaten. Burada var mı burada? Yani genellikle burada oluyor zaten. Hı. Kafkas arısı Kars'ta, Kars bölgesinde oluyor. Evet. Yani normal arılara göre iğnesi daha uzun olduğu için Hı. arının direkt yani şey, çiçeğin özünü toplayabiliyor. Evet. Çok teşekkür ederim bilgi için. Yani bu peniye almak istiyorum. 100 TL ne kadar? Şey mi? Fiyatı 160 TL. Şöyle kesilmiş zaten halleri var şöyle. Hı hı. Aa, Hayır, tamam. Tartıyoruz ne kadar geliyorsa ona göre. Hı, tamam. Bir tane mi olsun böyle? Evet bir tane. Lake Childe, quite a special lake because I'm sitting on it right now. It gets completely frozen in winter. Right now it's the end of February and it's already warming up. I long for you so much I can find my way. We got everything. Salep original. Oh, bilç. Çok güzel. Tartın. Çok teşekkürler. Sen badanaca düşme. Tamam. Dur, dur, dur, dur. <gülüyor> Merker'e selam söylüyorum. Merker abla seni de en kısa zamanda buraya bekliyorum. Sen de gel tamam mı? I'm going to the lake now. Wow. It is not easy. It is extremely slippery. Yavaş gidiyorum. <gülüyor> Her şeyi. Sen Evet. Çok kaygan. Francisca. Francisca. Francisca. Evet. Tamam. Çok güzel. I became friends with Volkan. He's going to show me around on the lake. İsmin neydi? Francisca. Francisca. Yabancı isimlere fazla alışık. Evet, so. So usually on this lake there are fishermen drilling holes into the lake. They fish the fish and after this they bring it to the restaurant where you can then eat it. The Childe Lake is 120 square meters big. So it's a very big lake and it actually shares borders with Kars and Ardahan. Dimme. Evet. So what can we do here? We can drink chai, for example. Şarap var. Sıcak şarap var, salep var. Aa. Burada kuşburnu çay var. Hı hı. Bir dakika, dur dur. Tamam. Hangi çay bu? Bu kuşburnu. Kuşburnu? Bu doğal. Aa, o. Dağlardan topluyoruz. Ha. Bunu kaynatıyoruz. Bak bunun tadına da bak. Çok güzel. Ve şöyle bir şey. Çekiyor musun? Ha, evet. Bak, Aa, şey. kuşburnu. Evet. Ah, evet. Ha. Dağlardan topluyoruz, bunu atıyoruz. Bu çok faydalı bir şey. Tamam. İçerinde yapabilir miyim? İçerinde mi? Öyle düştü, atma. At, at içine. Ha, at. <gülüyor> Göl çok temizli, değil mi? Temiz göl. Türkiye'nin en temiz gölleri arasında. Aha, evet. <gülüyor> Şeker vereyim mi? Ne? Şeker. Yok teşekkürler. Çok sıcak. Sıcak tabii değil mi? Çok <gülüyor> Yabancılar geliyor mu buraya? Hangi ülkeden? Bütün ülkelerden geldi mi? Hmm. Fransa, Brezilya. Aa, Almanlar geliyor mu? Gözün yok mu? Yok. Sıkıntı yok. Güzel. Doğa gibi. Gözlerin altına şey, his çek. Problem yok. <gülüyor> Hayat bu. <gülüyor> Başlıyor. Evet. Düşebilir miyiz? Düştürüyoruz ama. 
Vurdun mu? Evet. Nereye fazla gitme. <gülüyor> tamam. Gittiğin zaman buz kırılıp düşersin. O zaman gitmiyor Oğuz. O zaman gitme. Tamam. Çünkü buz yiyince ben giderim de sen düşer edersen olmaz. Üstüne Hı -hı. bir daha değişmez şeyim var. Evet. <gülüyor> evet her şey iyi çok teşekkürler. Afiyet olsun. Şimdi balın tadına bak. Bu gölün tek balıdır. Sarı balık değil mi? Sarı balık evet. Aha. Elde çatal falan kullanma. Ah tamam. Ha tamam. <gülüyor> teşekkürler. It's like many years we do not have this in Germany. I'm at the only restaurant that is on the cars side of the Childe Lake. It's called Yunusun Yeri and they are serving only one thing here and that is fish, the yellow fish also called the yellow carp. In Turkish it's sarı balık. They are frying this. It is the symbol of the Childe Lake. There are actually many species living in the lake but the yellow fish is the most precious one. I'm sorry yellow carp but I gotta try you. Mm. Very good taste. A little bit salty because it's fried. The fish meat is very soft and it's very delicious. There's one dance that you will not be able to escape while being in cars and that's the Kafkas dance. A traditional dance coming from the Kakashians who used to be part of this community. Kafkas comes from the word Kafkasia, the word for the Caucasian mountain region that was home to the Kakashians who used to live here before the Kakashian genocide. Dancing is very important for the social life here, especially when you want to win over the heart of your loved ones. Dime. The dance has a lot in common with ballet because you can see men dance on the tips of their toes and women move very lightly gliding across the floor without moving their heads or upper bodies. And the men usually wear a black military style outfit. Wow, this was one of the best dances that I've ever seen in my life. Such powerful dance, was so emotional. Everyone had fun and people cried. People were dancing in the end. It was just amazing and wow. Welcome to Francis Food Review. I'm now at the famous Kass Evi here in Kars and there are two things that they told me I have to eat and that's first of all Evelik Chobasu which is like a local herb soup and of course the goose which is a very famous local food here in Kars as well. It's a local product so all of the things that are inside are first of all very healthy. It has a lot of herbs, green lentils and also um, bulgur. Also like there are small potatoes inside and the soup is completely vegetarian. I have never tried this before in my life so I have high expectations as usual. It tastes very healthy. Yeah, I think this is a soup that you just want to eat when it's really cold outside. It feels not too heavy, but it makes me warm from inside. I appreciate it. Merhaba. Merhaba. Beniz geldi. Siz gelmeden. Nasıl? Siz gelmeden geleceğiniz birisi geldi. Burayım. Hoş bulduk. Ne istiyorsunuz? Yok. Teşekkür ederim. Siz kimsiniz? İşletmenin müdürüyüm ben. Ah, çok iyi. Onun oğluyum. Ha. Ah. Yes. Tamam. Çok memnun oldum. Ben de. <gülüyor> Kas var mı? <gülüyor> tamam. <gülüyor> Teşekkürler. Ha, tamam. Evet. Daha iyi. 
Chocolate. Uh, yuk, sui. Chocolate. The famous Kass, the goose of Kass. And to me, this is not something exotic because we actually eat this a lot in Germany, especially during Christmas time. There's a saying in Kass that goes, you can't go back without eating goose. I have to do it. I'm just looking at the menu and there are different options for the goose. First of all, there's the Tandilda goose. It is 130 liras. There's also a whole goose that you can order. It's for four to five people and it's 600 liras. So the special thing about this goose is that it is not cooked right away, but the goose is cut, dried, salted and buried in the snow. Why? Because they say if you put the goose into the refrigerator, the taste will disappear. And in Kass they also say, Je kas etini gele zetini. So I just have to do it afid osun. It's very, very soft. Wow. Compared to chicken, the goose meat is a little bit darker and kind of brownish in its color and it's a little bit more tough but still very soft. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is very delicious. Tastes exactly like in Germany. So I'm coming back here for Christmas for sure. And it is a lot. It's quite simple, just the goose and some bulgur, but it's very delicious. Auf <sighs> Wow, my time in Kars is over. I spent the whole weekend there, but it feels like so much longer. Kars is extraordinary, beautiful, with full of kind and nice people. I experienced Kars in winter, but I heard that Kars in summer is just as beautiful. So I'm sure it was not my last time in Kars. Also a very big thanks to the Cheltikov hotel staff who hosted me with such kindness and big hospitality. I had an amazing stay there and they were always smiling. Thank you so much. The hospitality of the East is something so precious and valuable that I'm really sad to leave this place so soon in one hour going back to the busy Istanbul. That's it from Cars, see you next time.